what do I think about the food business? I'll tell you what I think about the food business. I think that everybody's got a misconception of what it entails and what kind of life you have in the food business. It's not what everybody think it is on what they see on those TV shows. It's long hours, hard work, heavy stress, and the change of work ethic going on the last 10, 12 years, which I see every day because I'm still in the business. I, damn, I remember my first restaurant, we didn't have TVs in them. We didn't have open Wi-Fi networks. People were communicating. People go to the restaurants. They talk to each other, talk to other people, make new friends. They would talk with uh, the waiters and the waitresses and the managers. You know, it was, it was still a gathering place. Now you see people over there, they don't even talk to their own people that they're with at the table. I hear moms and dads telling kids, shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. Like they're getting interrupted because they're streaming on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever the hell of the damn thing they do on the phone. You know, kids need attention too, you know. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a uh, it's crazy, crazy business is business. You got to find every corner to save a dollar, you know. I mean, I give you a perfect example. We used to have this guy, he would sell garbage bags, you know, by the case, 50 in a case, you know. I'm not going to get into specific sizes of the bags, but it doesn't matter. The point being was he was selling them for $10 a case, you know, which was uh, $4, $5 cheaper a case, you know, and we do a lot of garbage bags, especially with the amount of businesses that we had going on. So I had, uh, the guy came one day and, uh, he was bringing them down in the basement, you know, made a little chain. He was bringing them down. So I happened to be down there doing some things as well. Inventory, of course, because if you don't keep an eye on your inventory, you could lose money left and right. And I pick up one of the cases and it felt very light. I said, huh? So I opened it up. I opened it up over there and, uh, like a crazy guy that I am. I decided to count the bags. It wasn't 50 in the bag, it was 30 in the bag. I opened up about 10, 11 more cases and they were all 30 in the bag. So, uh, uh uh-huh, okay, no problem. This fucking guy was taking 20 extra out of certain amount of cases and he'd make other cases. That's how he makes even more money, you know? So uh, I said, okay, this fucking guy, next time he comes around, you know, he came by like a couple weeks later I said, come here. I don't want no delivery. Get the fuck out of here. And the next time I see you around, I'm going to crack your fucking head open with a fucking mallet. And he goes, why, why, why? I said, because I caught your ass fucking clipping cases. That's why, you fucking jerk off. And that's when I decided to get into the import business. I was going to make my own fucking garbage bags. So after doing a little bit of research, I found a fucking... uh, manufacturing company they gave me better quality bags more heavy duty like the kind you would get for construction three mil thick you know and uh they printed me 150 bags to a case so i got a whole fucking tractor trailer this is deciding to be the crazy guy i am if i'm gonna import them i'm gonna bring a whole fucking shipping container over so i made the deal with them blah 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 i go to the bank I go to the bank with $25,000 cash and I tell them I need a line of credit because they wouldn't take a check. I had to have a line of credit open and blah, blah, blah. So I go to the bank over there with 25 grand in a fucking bag. I tell the lady, I see, I said, I need a line of credit. I don't know this shit. I'm not a fucking uh, businessman, financial paper pusher guy. I'm a fucking hustler. That's what I do. Jersey hustle, you know? Lady at the bank tells me I need to open up an account, blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, lady, I got twenty-five fucking thousand dollars. I need to open up a fucking line of credit. Yeah. Long story short, I get it all done. Takes about a month. They ship over uh, a whole shipping container. It's sitting at uh at the port in Newark. I had to wait for whatever to clear customs and all that bullshit. So I get the whole thing. It was a little more than I expected. Cause it was uh if I remember somewhere right around 50,000 fucking cases of garbage bags. I go down to the bigger diner I had because they had a huge basement and a fucking, uh, like a laundry chute made out of steel type thing. 
So we're piling up all these fucking garbage bags down in the fucking basement of the diner. Thank God it was a fucking three and a half thousand square foot basement. I filled up every fucking wall from floor to ceiling all the way around the whole fucking place. My father comes downstairs. He's like, what the fuck is all this? I said, it's all garbage bags. He says, Jesus Christ, this is for like 30 fucking years for us. He goes... He goes to me, how much did you pay a case? I said, $4 a case. He goes to me, what? I said, yeah. I said, well, to be exact, five, five and a quarter fucking through customs. He goes, get the fuck out of here. He starts bugging out. Anyway, we didn't have to buy garbage bags for like fucking three, four years for either of the diners. So that's when I decided, I said, you know what? I'm going to make some phone calls. I'm going to liquidate some. Just because I hit my goal and I accomplished what I wanted to do. So I made some phone calls. I started selling fucking 200 here, 500 there, 400 here, 500 there. Uh, I kept enough for me and, uh, you know, the other three walls of the fucking diner, they were all for sale. You know, it was good times, good times. But I always had the reputation of if you need something, go to Zen. He can find it or he can get it or whatever. It didn't fucking matter. Sneakers, purses, watches, fucking shit for restaurants, shit for cars. It didn't fucking matter. I always had that reputation. You know what I mean? But that's the kind of shit you got to do to make a fucking dollar in the business. Because it's not like 80 years ago. Now, every six months, they come around for inspections. You got to pay. You got to do hood cleanings every other month instead of once a year. Fucking fire suppression shit. On top of all the other stress and uh, aggravation. Oh, man. You know... Pork, egg, and cheese, disco fries every day, baby. We always got to be slinging something. Always. Always got to be slinging something. You know? So business is booming. It's rolling along. We're making money. Spending money. That's how that game is. Ten cents on the dollar if you're fucking uh, lucky. You know what I mean? But if you're a good operator and you're cutting corners left and right... You can get it up to 18, 20%, 22%, but you got to make the moves. You got to make the moves, you know what I mean? Got to do it the dirty jersey way, you know? Cut them corners, make those good buys, you know? Uh, I just want to tell you, you know, uh, I went from a fucking car to a van to a truck to a box truck. Anything to do to make that fucking money, get those right deals, you know? Always for a good deal. I looked into, uh, you know, I said, all these distributors and these clowns, they're not any smarter than me. Let me look into where these guys are buying. So I hear about this place, Hunts Point. Now, I know Hunts Point, but it's usually hookers, drugs, guns, and any other damn thing you could think of. I didn't think about the meat district and uh, this and that. So I decided to take a trip up to Hunts Point. I had a little van. I said, fuck it, I'm going to go up there. I did a couple of purchases. It was working out good. No problem. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go all out. I'm going to get a little uh, six-pallet box truck, you know? So I started ordering and going back and forth. So what I want to say is, I started going back and forth. Started carrying heavy cash. Because usually I'd have to go up there with like four or 5000 Because I would go twice a week. So, you know, I couldn't fit it all in one shot for two places. So after about two hours of fucking traffic to get into Hunts Point and another hour there and another hour back out, I'm sitting at a fucking street light over there waiting to get out of Hunts Point. This fucking guy comes up to me with a fucking knife. He goes to me, give me all your money. I said, I got no money, man. I got food. He's, he's like, oh, what kind of food you got? I said, I got fucking tomatoes, potatoes, fucking lettuce. Because I don't want that shit. Give me your wallet. I said, I'll give you something better. I pull out a fucking 9mm and I stick it right out the window and I put it in his fucking face. I tell him, hey, asshole, you're either going to eat fucking raw potatoes, carrots, tomatoes, or you're going to fucking start running before I bust a cap in your fucking ass. After that, I said, you know what? I'm going to start checking out this other place called Philly. It's the Philly regional distribution area and it's much bigger than Hunts Point. And it would only take me an hour anyway to get down here fucking New York cost me the same anyway to get in and out time wise so I go up there a couple times I get to learn the business here and there I find this joint Quaker City I said why should I penny pinch like these other 
vendors that come to the diners, they go shopping at like four in the fucking morning and they save 25 cents from one guy on potatoes, but then they pay 30 cents higher on tomatoes from the other guy. So I talked to Quaker City, we get the ball rolling, it was nice. I would call the morning I'm gonna go up there, they'd have my shit ready on pallets, I'd back up, they'd load me up and I'd fucking leave. I'd pay him cash. So after a while, I had to move up to a bigger truck, like an eight pallet job, you know, just short of air brakes. So uh, I cut the deal with the Quaker and I say, hey, listen, I don't want to keep carrying fucking cash left and right every fucking time I come up here. You don't know what's going to happen, you know? And if I get pulled over being overweight, which happened quite a few times, I don't want to have this much cash on me unless I know I'm coming to pay you, you know? So we started going week in, week out. Now that means the inventory you get today, next week you pay when you come up for your next delivery. So, all right, no problem. That worked out good for me. I did it for years. I got to know the guys very well. Big fucking cherry red 450 pound Irishman sitting there all the time. He goes to me, you know, all the fucking vendors and distributors, you're the only guy that doesn't go fucking shopping around. I said, for what? What am I gonna shop for? I'm gonna save 20 cents with you and go pay 20 cents higher with the next guy up the, in the next uh, spot over there for, for something else. If I, it ain't worth my time. You do the fucking shopping and give me the good price. I'm saving money anyway. So we got to be pretty good friends, you know. And I'm coming down fucking the turnpike. I come out of Belmauer. I hop on. I'm going. I'm going. We hit some light traffic. There was a rolled over truck or whatever on a, on an exit. And backed up the traffic. Now I'm way the fuck overweight. Because that day I had to get just one fucking item. All fucking potatoes. I got eight pallets in the truck, but I stacked up another seven pallets of potatoes on top. That fucking truck was full from top to bottom. I go to step on the gas and you can see that the fucking truck is way overweight. It's barely fucking moving. There's a trooper on the side of the road. He pulls me the fuck over. He goes to me, do you know what your max capacity is? I said, sure. Hang on. Let me open the door. I open the door. I see the gross weight. I said, no problem. So the guy goes to me, looks at me like you're overweight. I said, I don't know. I mean, I got eight pallets of potatoes in the truck. He goes to me, you got what? I said, yeah, eight pallets of potatoes. He goes to me, are you a vendor, a distributor or something? I said, no, I have a diner in Jersey. He goes to me, for one diner, you have that many potatoes? I said, bro, did you ever go to the diner at 4.30 in the morning and not eat breakfast with some fucking nice, good, greasy home fries? He goes to me, oh, yeah, they're really good. So I guess he kind of liked my... Uh, my, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, my style, he starts fucking cracking up. So he goes to me, all right, well, come out of the truck and open it up for me. I just want to make sure you have the potatoes in there. I open it up and a fucking bag rolls out. He goes to me, Jesus Christ, man, what the fuck? He's like, you know, I can I can pull you right, right now and take you out of here because you're way the fuck overweight. He smack you with fines. I was like, well, you figure they're, they're 50 pound bags, you know? And I got eight pallets, you know what I mean? 20 on a pallet <laughs> so he does the math he goes to me blah 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 he's like yeah but it doesn't look like 20 on a pallet it looks more like 60 on a fucking pallet <coughs> I go to him nah it's 20 it's just we just all threw it in there he goes he's like close it up and get out of here have a nice day be careful don't slam on the brakes and don't make any sharp turns he's like if I have to hear about you uh, next time I'm gonna get you good if you're in the news I said all right man thanks I gave him my number whatever I told him, I said, hey, if you're ever uh, an hour away from here towards the shore, he goes to me, where at? I said, uh, well, I got one diner in Point Pleasant. He goes, oh, yeah, I go to Point Pleasant all the time. We go to Jenks on my uh, on my double day off uh, when they have two days off back to back and we get trash. I said, yeah, come down. He's like, we got the best food around. I said, got good atmosphere too, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good. I wasn't expecting the fucking guy to come down there. But the first fucking, uh, first stretch he had two days off, he came down the fucking shore and he comes walking in the diner. He goes to me, hey, you're the guy that I pulled over, right? I said, yeah. <laughs> so how you doing? He goes to me, ah, oh, no, man. I was like, I, you know what? My cousin's got a house down here. I said, oh, that's pretty cool. We ended up becoming pretty good friends. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know. But I was telling him, I was like, yeah, man, I'm always over fucking weight, this and that. He's like, 
He's like, yeah, just do what you keep doing, what you do with me. You'll be all right most of the times because it's like half of the guys we pull over, they're assholes to begin with, and they don't want to fucking hear anything. But uh, yeah, it's another perfect example. What you got to do to fucking cut the corners? <laughs>